So we have a finished document. Proofread it carefully from beginning to end, reading it aloud to yourself or to someone else to find all the errors. To preview the document anytime, we can click this button and select preview, just like we did last time. And it looks pretty good. Now we're ready for what's called pre-flight. This is kind of like your last technical check before takeoff in a flight to the printer. So see this green button down here? It's telling us that we have no errors in images, fonts, or overset text, which is great because especially in large documents, you can have a lot of errors that you just don't see until you do a pre-flight. But what if we did have an error? Let's create an intentional error to see what it looks like. I'm just creating a text overset by pulling the text frame up and hiding some of the text here. And now you see the error button turn red. Click on that and choose pre-flight. We see a panel pops up to tell us what the error is. And it says text. We double click on that and see, yep, it's text overflow. And we double click on that to find out where that overflow is. We can see that this text box has been selected and the little box with the plus sign appears now so that we can drag it out and reveal the text. That pre-flight button will also turn red if you import text from, a, let's say, a Word document, but you don't have those fonts here, etc. It'll alert you that it's the wrong font. But we're ready to go, so make sure your document is saved and then go to File, Export. and choose a place for your document to be saved. And we can rename our document if we want to. And we're gonna save it as an Adobe PDF file. An Adobe PDF is a universal file type anyone can read without the software that created it. So nobody needs InDesign to read this file once we create a PDF. We have two choices. Adobe PDF Interactive would be an appropriate choice for creating a document that will be viewed online, such as an email attachment or a download from a website or social media post, or maybe an interactive ebook. The PDF Interactive allows people to click on links, play a video, see an animated GIF, etc. Or we can choose PDF Print to prepare it for a printer. So let's do that now and click Save. Now we see this PDF window pop up. Normally we can leave all the defaults here, but let's look at a few things. First, let's look at the Adobe PDF preset field. That should say high quality print. We might also wanna check view PDF after exporting, so it'll pop up automatically and we can see it. The only other setting we care about is if we have a bleed like we do in this document where images are extended all the way to the edge of the page. If your printer needs printer's marks, then you'll select marks and bleeds and click on all printer's marks. Plus we click on use document bleed settings. And when we export this, we will see the crop marks and the bleed marks as well as some other marks that we'll explain. And now click export. And here we have a document with printer's marks. We can get it to the printer by sharing it through a Dropbox or another cloud server or emailing it. The printer is going to print this on large paper so it can be trimmed back to show the bleed all the way to the edge. And this is where the printer is going to crop at these marks. And over here, the registration marks show that the page is positioned correctly in the printer. And these color bars will prove the colors have printed properly. On important print runs, you can physically go to the printer and check these color bars to make sure the color will look right. Or if the color bars look right and your photos don't, then it's a problem with the photos. But if this looks all good, give the printer thumbs up and they can run that print job. But let's say we want to print at home. Go to File and Print. And now let's look at the settings. We're gonna choose our printer, and I'm not connected to one at the moment, but you might be. The default paper size will be the size of our InDesign document, which is eight and a half by 11. If we go to settings, we see this. 
However, if we use that paper size in a bleed, it won't print all the way to the edge and we'll have a white border around the document. Not pretty. So we have a couple of choices. We could print this on larger paper size, like an A3 paper size, and go down here to the page position to center it. And you can see the document icon center inside the paper size. Then after we've printed it, we would crop it down to letter size. Or if we don't have larger paper, we could stay with our letter size paper and just scale the document to fit inside that paper size. To do that, we click scale to fit. And now we can see the document icon shrinks down a little bit and stays within the paper. Now we can decide whether we want the printer's marks to show or not and we click print. Yeehaw! Then when it prints out, you can trim it down yourself and it'll come out a little less than letter size. And we're done. You've learned the main skills for Adobe InDesign. There's a lot more to it. If you want to learn about master pages, check out the next video. Until then, have fun and make magic.